We're talking about the CONCACAF W Championship that is taking place this summer in Mexico, July 4th through the 18th. The winners of these games get to go to the Women's World Cup. It's eight teams two groups. Each team plays in three games in the group stage. It's single round robin type of style. The top two teams from each group qualify for the knockout rounds with single elimination. It's a little bit of restructuring and reformatting this year with World Cup qualification, Olympic qualification, Gold Cup qualification all on the line. But one very important factor that we need to look at is these CONCACAF W Championship matches are happening in Mexico. Shout out to everyone who is joining us live on YouTube right now in the chat. We want you guys to win a $100 Paramount Plus gift card. So be sure to like this video and drop your social media handle, Twitter or Instagram, in the chat without the at symbol for a chance to win a $100 Paramount Plus gift card. We want you guys to win. Drop your social media handle in the chat, but this chat, you guys are here for us. And I love it. I got to give a shout out to TJ Trex saying that Mexico playing in Mexico, this is a big factor coming into this. Uh, some other people making shout outs, Christopher Meister saying that U S is playing on away soil in front of away fans for the CONCACAF W championship and it's world cup qualifiers on the line i want to talk about this how much of an advantage or rather disadvantage for the u.s does do they have going to mexico for these qualifiers and how much of an advantage is it for Concacaf and soccer as a whole to have these being played in mexico in front of home mexican fans sandra what are your thoughts on this being played in mexico listen I love it. I think that there's been <laughs> in bias here. That's why I want to go to you first. <laughs> listen, listen, I appreciate the space and the floor when it comes to talking about this Mexican national team. I'm I'm here for it. I think it's been something that we wanted to see for, for quite some time. I think for those of us in the space, people who are even just neutrals, right, of this, of this sport. Uh, but you want to see it happening when – there's a time like this when you're when we're watching this Mexican national team do what they're doing off of the the groundwork of a domestic league, right? So we didn't see that from this Mexican national team during the qualifiers in 2018 for the 2019 World Cup. The 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 league at the time, Liga MX Femenil, was was still very young. It's still a very young league. Mm -hmm. uh, it's under a decade uh, old, uh, unlike uh, some other leagues out there. Uh, but even at that time, it was an incredibly, incredibly young le league. And some of the, the storyline and the narrative around that then was, hey, we should see a certain type of energy or fight or, or, or play level of play from this Mexican side during qualifiers because, hey, they've got themselves a league now. And what happened was they got bounced. They failed to qualify. Mm -hmm. That's what happened. So I think in light of all that, it's part of what was uh, so gutting about you know, not being able to qualify was that this league was just getting off of the ground. And then you're not heading over to a world cup, which we know can provide a lot of eyeballs and a lot of gauge, a lot of interest uh, within uh, programs uh, throughout the world. So now here we are fast forwarding to qualifiers now for this 2023 world cup. And you've got a league that has generated so much interest. You're talking about a league that when it enters its playoffs components from from you're talking quarterfinals, semifinals, all the way through to their grand final, it has eyeballs on it nonstop. You have people who are looking for for streams some kind of way. You have people who are are going to team channels specifically to try to catch team specific streams of these playoff games, and you're you're witnessing huge crowds in these stands. Now it's going to be this championship is going to be in Monterrey, Mexico, where where you've had teams like Tigres Feminil. And you've had the Rayadas coming through multiple times during uh, championship finals in Liga MX Femenil. And it has really sort of set this stage for big events. And now it's going to host a large international event. It's going to be welcoming in multiple national teams. And because it is very close to the United States, it's probably going to see uh, some other types of fans other than Mexican fans. It might have a lot of uh, U.S. fans coming in mm -hmm. to make some noise as well. So I'm very, very excited for this. 
Uh, yeah, I would absolutely love to see Mexico upset the United States. I am going to say that on the United States Women's <laughs> National Team Hour because <laughs> put it on record. Uh, I am I uh, because look, we're talking about we're talking about this championship qualifiers, you know, and it's got more than one team in it. Despite us talking about the United States United States Women's National Team Hour on this on this show, but it's you've got eight teams total here, and. Uh, if there's an opportunity for some other teams to make some noise, I'm, I'm here for it. That's, I think is one of the main differences yes. between covering this side of the game versus the men's side of the game. And I think Lori can also attest to this too. There's a, a certain level of growth and building that I think is trying to have, like that we're trying to cultivate on this side of, of the ball. There's a lot of things that don't translate from this rivalry on the men's side of the game between United States and Mexico that doesn't translate to fan culture on uh, the non-men's side of the game. It's a little bit different because it's still growing. Mm -hmm. And these are things that a lot of people are trying to grow and nurture and cultivate in their own ways, you know? So we're going to see how this plays out. I'm not going to sit here and act like there's not a chance that Me that, that Mexico is going to, you know, crap the bed and maybe, <laughs> you know, and maybe do something. I'm not going to sit here and act like that's not possible. Anything is possible. We're, 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 seeing, we're seeing two sides of it. You're saying yeah. I, I want Mexico to win, but also like, hey, they may not. Our chat they is loving not. that. You know, there's a, there's, tell it how it is. There's, I, I there's, a, it. there's a lot of pros to, to being the, the host team in an event like this. But there's a lot of pressure yeah. that comes with that too. There, mm -hmm. this team is absolutely motivated by their their failure to qualify back in the previous World Cup, and they're motivated by wanting to show off the soccer that they've been playing, their style of play. But with all of that great stuff comes a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna see. We're we're not gonna know till we know. Lori, <laughs> I want to ask you because you mentioned player for player. The U.S. is probably better than a lot of these other teams. However, there's so many factors coming into this. And before we take a trip down memory lane for this 2022 CONCACAF W championship happening in Mexico, how much does that affect the players being at an away stadium when most of their friendlies has been here? Yes, they did go to Australia in November. But how does that change things for the U.S.? Well, I think it, it speaks to what Sandra was saying. Like, I, I think that you know, depending on what the, what the eyes on the games are, what the um, fans are like, how, how packed are these stadiums could be, could be a massive difference or much to what Sandra was saying too, in terms of like, if you just look at the men's side, right? What is, what is that like when our men's team just recently went to Azteca, that place used to be brutal to play in. Right. And for different reasons, um, traffic outside the stadium, a ton of different things <laughs> taking place. It wasn't nearly as scary, right? Like, um, in quotes, scary, um, and, and difficult to play there. So like, listen, I think that there's, there's an opportunity for be to be really challenging. I mean, again, how, how, how are the fields mode, right? Are yeah. they going to be so there's so many factors that go into this of like, we call gamesmanship, which yeah. is like, like, are you watering the fields? Are you mowing the fields? Are they going to be super slow? Are they, um, our team's going to kick the ball out and make it disruptive every single ch chance they get. That's not, I understand that this is, these are like some hypotheticals, but these are also realities that take place when you are trying to um, head to and, and qualify for a world cup. And I don't think we've talked a lot about this in the past because yes, the U S has been dominant, right? The U S has been dominant for the most part and the women's game continues to grow. So these are going to be con continue to be factors though, going forward as the gap continues to, to, to grow and you're finding any sort of edge to take place. Um, but playing in Mexico, I mean, these are just things that are going to have to happen and yeah. you have to overcome it. I mean, it's like a World Cup qualifying, right? And like, listen, it, 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 I'm it, here it, for it, Sandra it, and it, this it, Mexico it, team. I am here for all of this, right? Yeah. And do I have so much respect and like belief behind our U.S. Women's national, national team? Yes. 100%, and yeah. I also realize, again, the general dialogue is our young players and when you look at some of the performances uh have they been the most convincing in terms of no not all of them right they not all of them have mm -hmm. so there's still a lot of question marks on the u.s side which yeah. is totally fine right and yeah. um and so 
we still have a couple months. I think things will hash themselves out in terms of player personnel and availability. What that looks like, there'll probably be some tough decisions for Vlaco, no doubt. Um, but outside of that, um, honestly, at this point in time, it's really you just have to get out of business regardless of where you're competing. Exactly. And that's the and, mentality and that I exactly. Expected. Exactly. And there's so much on the line. I mean, uh, we talked about Group A being potentially that group of death with the United States, Mexico, Jamaica, and Haiti. Uh, Jamaica, I think they have a chip on their shoulder. They had a great uh, W qualifiers run just dominating throughout that play. Haiti, they are looking for their first World Cup qualifiers coming into this. They they were one of the best teams throughout the CONCACAF qualifiers. 44 goals, zero goals against. Mexico, zero goals against. They also have a lot on the line playing in their home country. And then when you look at Group B, these teams are also playing in Mexico. No, not against the host country in this initial round. But after that, the top two teams from each group will move on to the elimination round between Canada, Costa Rica, Panama, Panama and Trinidad and Tobago. Panama and Trinidad and Tobago looking for their very first World Cup qualifying. So there's a lot on the line between all of these different nations, and they're all heading to Mexico to do this. This summer, July 4th through the 